Welcome to Women on the Rise with hosts Patricia King and Michelle Bouquet. Well, hello, Women on the Rise. Thanks for being with us today. And I'm here with Patricia King. Hey, and Michelle. today we want to talk about having a face like Flint. And what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. What does it mean, Michelle? Well, okay. So, you know, I've been I've been looking at this and there's there's been the Lord just has continued to be speaking to me of put your face forward. Keep going forward. And sometimes in our lives we have things that happen. Right. We have disappointments, we have hurt, we have grief. Uh, we even have good things that have happened that want to anchor us and keep us where we are or even in the past yeah. or carrying a lot of baggage with us mm -hmm. trying to go forward. But the scripture talks about setting your face with a holy determination. That's what flint means? That's what flint means in, in Isaiah, yes. Right. And setting your face forward with that with a holy determination that says, I want the more. I'm going to continue on. I'm going after that prize. Yeah. And and when your scripture talks about running a race, yeah. right? So I've never seen anyone running a race backward. Right. <laughs> Right. right. So it, we are built to move with fluidity in a forward motion. Right. It's not that we can't take steps backward, but we don't get places quickly that way. Right. And we don't have eyes that have been placed mm -hmm. in the back of our head. It's this way. This is yep. our forward place. Even Paul said in uh, Philippians uh, 2 or 3, rather, um, in verse 10, he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained it or have already become uh, perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. He says, brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting mm -hmm. what lies behind right. and reaching forward <laughs> to what lies ahead, so, I press on yeah. toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ. And I think that, I mean, when we look at the Apostle Paul, he had lots that he could have got stuck in sure. because he got called with a mighty call, you know, as far as um, on the road to Damascus, he, he met face to face with the Lord there and he had his pride taken care of and taken up into the glory realm and all that. And then he faced persecution probably more than any of the other apostles did. He went through many hardships. He describes a lot of those within the scripture, but he never stayed inside of those. Those right. became his testimony for moving forward. And then he says here, he, he's trying to describe to the church. He said, okay, so all those things are producing in me a greater revelation of God, but I know what I'm going for. I'm going, I'm going after being conformed into his image. I'm going after knowing the power of his resurrection, knowing that new life. And even though I've, I've, I've come through all these things, I haven't attained to the fullness of it, but what I'm doing is pressing on. So he wasn't stuck. Mm -hmm. He wasn't stuck in the hardship. He wasn't stuck in the persecution. He wasn't playing a victim in it, saying, oh man, you have no idea what I've been through as an apostle. He was just like with this joy headed forward. He says, I'm just, I'm just turning my head like Flint. You know, I am not, I'm not going to let anything distract me. Not, no hardship, n nothing that happened to me in the past, no maltreat from, from people. I am not going to let that stop me from moving forward into my destiny. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. And we have a tendency to hit a speed bump and camp there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not there's some pretty intense speed bumps that come yeah. along. But what you're saying is, is that there is, if we stay in that place, we're going to miss that life that is beyond what can be imagined that he speaks of in John where he says in this world you'll have trouble but yeah. I have overcome the world I have come to give you a life that is an abundant life beyond what you can imagine yeah. Yeah. and pressing forward into that 
is is joyful. Absolutely, yeah. or it can be joyful. Yeah. Um, I'm getting a word of knowledge for someone right now. There's a, a woman watching this program, and you have been in a very difficult season. Talk about challenges coming from every side. It's including your finances. It's including a relationship. Um, and, and it looks like you're so stuck and it feels like you're defeated. And you've even thought, man, I just feel like throwing in the towel. I feel like giving up. And, you know, I've been in situations like that myself, difficult, challenging times, and the enemy will come and say, you might as well just just lay everything down right now and, you know, just just park and, you know, watch some crime shows or something for the rest of your life and, and, and just stop here. But what kept me going was looking forward. It's when the Holy Spirit said, don't look right now at all the hardships that you're facing. Look at the joy that is set before you. And that's what kept Jesus going. It says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So the Lord would have me when I hit times like that. And we all do from time to time. So I don't want you to feel alone in your battle. I don't want you to feel ashamed that you're where you are right now. But the Lord wants to give you some good news right now is that if you start looking forward to your victories, if you start looking forward to what God is going to do for you and with you and through you, and that there's good days ahead, the scripture says goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. When you look to the joy set before you, you will endure what you're going through right now. And it'll help you move forward into that which you see gives you joy at this time. And I just want to testify that every single battle, and I'm not telling you this because I haven't had a battle or because I've only had one battle. I've had many battles that bring you kind of to the end of yourself, to a place of discouragement where you feel, I don't think I have the strength to go on. I don't know if I have emotional equity to move forward here. But every single time, every single time when I put that into action, saying, look at the joy set before me, to the victory that is set before me. It gives me strength to rise up and to pursue um, the Lord and all that he has for me. And I just release that over you right now. I just release a breakthrough over you right now. All that discouragement lifting off, the shame lifting off right now in Jesus' name. And I want you to lift up your head it says, w women on the rise is what we're called. So rise, <laughs> rise up and look at mm -hmm. the goodness of the Lord because his goodness and his mercy will follow you all the days of your life. I proclaim that as a breaker statement for you. It's beautiful. And you mentioned shame in the midst mm -hmm. of that. And I, 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 you were talking about Paul and he really could have gotten stuck in a real place of shame because of what he had done to the church. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And I'm, I'm hearing where there are some people who are stuck in shame and having a hard time moving right. past some things that uh, have happened or that you have done in the past. But who the Son has set free is free indeed. And there is liberty from shame. That's so not good. something that... Shame is not your cloak. Yeah. You are clothed in the cloak of righteousness and the old things have passed away yeah. and you can move forward. Michelle, you mentioned about Paul. I never thought of it until this minute. And you mentioned how Paul could have taken a cloak of shame. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that just came to me now, I never thought of this before, was that he was a very high level ruler amongst the Pharisees. He was probably one of the most educated theologians yes. in his day yes. and had some of the most authority in his day. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he's an icon. Right. He's, I mean, people <laughs> are looking to him. Yeah. He's the big guru, so to, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then he finds out through one encounter with Jesus that he was all wrong. Wow. Yeah. So you when going. your pride yeah. is attacked like that, yeah. when your pride is attacked, shame hits you. Mm. And that's when a lot of people will try to, you know, hide their shame by lying or covering it up or whatever. But Paul didn't. Yeah. And I'm just sensing that's that really there's good. someone that you've taken a dogmatic stand on something mm. and you've just mm -hmm. recently discovered that you were wrong about it and you've been trying to <laughs> excuse it or cover it up. And the Lord says, don't 
cover up because of shame. That's what Adam and Eve did in the garden. They tried to cover up their shame. Mm -hmm. Don't cover it. Just go to the Lord and get his, get his comfort, mm -hmm. get his cleansing. And that's what, what Paul did. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just, he just took on Jesus, he right? Yeah. He, he just would not let his pride take on the shame. Mm -hmm. He just opened up and said, yeah, I totally made, I, I just totally made a mistake. <laughs> he just was so open and vulnerable yeah. and so genuine. Yeah. He said, yeah, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I did all this, but I counted all as dung, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I made, you know, I was a persecutor of the church. I was, I was wrong in my theology. I, you know, I just counted all of it as nothing compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing <laughs> Jesus. And so when we throw off that humiliation, that shame and say, God, I'm, I'm just going to clothe myself in you right now, in your compassion, in your love, in your mercy. He will become your covering, not your lies to cover it up, not your excuses, mm -hmm. not your protection of your pride or your shame, but no, he will cover you with love that will allow you to be free, like in childlike faith. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like someone's um, getting some light on that right <laughs> now. It just came as light to me as you were talking. So It's so good. I. I want to distinguish, too, between moving forward in the spirit and striving. Oh, so important. Right? So, you know, when we're talking about moving forward, it's, it's moving forward from a place of rest. And some, need, some have been so stuck in the past that they've, they've left rest, even. Yeah. And to think about moving forward when we're talking about setting your face like flint and, you know, leaving the things of the past, it's like, I'm, I'm already exhausted because I've been in this place of, you know, that drains, that drains joy from me, yep. life from me, and I've been trying to sort through issues and make decisions and, you know, and all that. And I know what it is to be that weary where move forward, yeah, I'd love to, but you know, things have to change for me to move forward. That's not necessarily the case because we're not talking about necessarily things in the natural. We're talking about that place in your spirit where you come in and you, so coming and moving forward from that place of rest is saying, Lord, I'm yours. All of these things that I have been carrying, I give them to you. And the more and the more that you do that, you allow the Lord to breathe on those places. It's, it, there is, there's an ascending that wow. happens from that place of rest. Wow. And we will never get to that place through a striving. Oh, it's so good. That striving, it does wear you out, mm -hmm. as you already said. And um, I think... We've all been there. Yeah. I've been there for sure. Yeah. You know, you just kind of grit your teeth and say, I'm, I'm going to move I'm forward no it. matter what. Right. You know, all hell's breaking loose against me, but I'm going to move forward. And that's a good thing. But if you're doing it out of that that striving, uh, you know, your adrenals can be affected. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. But I'm just seeing a vision <laughs> right now of, of um, the Lord's hand taking a woman's hand. And, and, and I feel him saying, daughter, just take my hand. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk with you. Mm -hmm. You don't feel you have the strength to move forward yourself, but mm -hmm. I'm going to walk with you. And that is what it feels like to be void of the, the, the stress and the striving, is you just let God take you by the hand and move you forward. But in your heart, you know you're moving forward. And I just see someone right now that you feel like you just can't get up. In fact, you're, you, you've been in depression. In fact, you are in bed right now. 
I see you in bed. And the Lord's saying, just take my hand. You're not going to stay in bed. You're going to walk with me, and your rest will be in me. Not in that bed. Right. It'll be in me. Right. And I'm going to walk you forward because there's good things that I have for you. Don't believe in your mind that everything's good, just going to stay overwhelming. It's not. You're, you are moving forward. In Jesus' name. It's beautiful. Yeah. Another place that we can get stuck from moving forward are looking back at the good things. Sure. And uh, it was so... I, I, I remember my dad, I mean, this is just sort of a down-home story, but he would always talk about his mother's peach pie. So no, what, no matter whoever else made a peach pie or any other peach cobbler or pie that he would eat, it just never compared to his mother's peach pie. Now, his mother had been dead for 50 years, <laughs> you know. Oh, no. so, it, it, so, I mean, at this point... That's a legacy. How do you even know what legacy. that peach pie tasted <laughs> like at that point? But sometimes in those things, we do. We build yeah. things up even. And we, we have so idolized some things that have been good in the past yeah. that it, it causes us to not be able to embrace fully the wonderful peach pie of the now. Yeah. And it, it may not be the same it may be different but different doesn't mean it is yeah. not good so good so don't don't jip yourself right by comparing everything to what was or what you yeah. wish had been yeah. even or being stuck in a really good experience like yeah i think you know we were talking about this earlier in the green room how like whole denominations um <laughs> who experience let's say revival in sure. the past if they stay stuck in that revival mode, mm -hmm. the cloud can move on, mm -hmm. but they're still here. So they'll build structures around that to protect that move, right. which is noble in some ways because they're wanting to steward that well. But God's moved on. Mm -hmm. So they get stuck here and God moves on to another revival, another mm -hmm. outpouring, and they don't get to partake of it because they're still back here. Mm -hmm. And you can actually get yourself bound by a religious spirit mm. by staying in something and, mm -hmm. and building your little structure. It would be like mm -hmm. Moses taking the people of Israel through the wilderness. They were led by the, by the pillar of cloud by day, by the uh, pillar of fire by night. So when God moved, they had to move with him. Mm -hmm. Even though they set up their tent, they had their little structures there. Probably the women got their little photographs out and put them on the wall of the tent or whatever. They built their uh, outhouses, <laughs> yeah. and so they had a place to go to the bathroom. And it took yeah. it, it took work mm -hmm. to set up the camp. Mm -hmm. You know, they had the tent of meeting all structured and right. everything all nice and cozy. But if that cloud moved, they couldn't say, "Oh man, no, I want to stay here. <laughs> I just got I here. just I just got it established. <laughs> you know, yeah. I want to stay here because if they did, they wouldn't move forward into all that God had for them, and mm -hmm. they." never get the promised land that's good so some of you need to i think that you need to ponder that one mm -hmm. is there anything that the memory of the past or the experience of mm -hmm. the past you're, that uh, you're trying to uh, memorialize in mm -hmm. such a way that you can't move forward that's now good. it's good to memorialize things sure. and enjoy everything that god did i'm doing that right now with um, 40 years of ministry right now and i'm going into my 70th year finishing my 70th year of of life and so I'm looking back and just just praising God for all the things that he's done. But when I'm going through the photo albums and everything, I'm thinking, mm -hmm. but that was then. Sure. And now I'm building something fresh now with right. him because I have to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I think especially, I'm just getting this word now, for those of you that are in, are in your later years, I'm turning 70. So it's really easy mm -hmm. to look at all the good things that God has done mm -hmm. in the last 70 years especially the last 40 years and say okay done you know no it's great to look back it's awesome but i mean there's so much good stuff to look at too but i have to look forward mm -hmm. i have to press on i have to look in fact i'm i'm working with god right now on creating a 10-year plan right <laughs> and so from 70 to 80 yeah because if i don't do that right i could just be like spinning wheels and just stay yes. where i've been yes. and you do not want to do that which is another place where we can stop moving forward yeah. are in places that we have become comfortable or Let's talk about maybe some patterns that we've just grown comfortable with in our lives. And 
you know, the Holy Spirit is saying, discern the new day. There's, there's freshness growing, wow. you know, and, and being in that same pattern is not going to allow you to embrace that yeah. freshness of the yeah. new day. In John, when Jesus went to the man at the pool of Bethesda, the man was entrenched in a pattern yeah. and had really developed a victim mentality, sure. right? And, you know, Jesus is like, do you want to be well? And the, the man didn't answer him. He just told him all the reasons he couldn't be. And standing before him was the creator of all things by, because he was the word, right? And that's who was standing in front of the man. He, he couldn't even recognize it. But that is who stands before yeah, us. So good. And there is healing that he is he's offering and, he, and and but when you've got those patterns you've got to then allow yourself to walk out yeah. of the pattern establish the new path the race that you're running and something that Jesus did when the man was healed is he told him pick up your bed and walk wow. he didn't want the man to continue to go back to a place wow. that was comfortable and sometimes we do that when we're pressing on to yeah. the new we hit something and we don't know what to do with so that true. so we go back to the last place that we knew that was yeah. comfortable for us but if if we continue to do that we will not hit those goals so that the Lord good, has Michelle. for us so good. Someone told me a story one time. I think it's true, actually. I think this story is true. Um, <laughs> but this woman had learned from her mother um, that when you buy a ham, I know what you're saying. I've heard this. <laughs> when, <but. laughs> when you buy a ham, you cut the end of it mm -hmm. off, you know, before you bake it. So she would cut it off faithfully, right. cut the end of it off, right. and uh, throw it away, <laughs> you know, and um, cook, cook the yeah. ham. And so one day someone asked her, why are you throwing away all that good meat? Right. She says, well, my mother did it. So she asked her mother, why did you do it? And she mm -hmm. said, well, my grandmother or, or her, her mother did it. Yeah. And so she went to the grandmother and said, Grandma, why do we cut the end off the meat? It looks like it's good meat. She says, well, well back in my day, uh, when we were raising the pigs and everything and we were cutting up the, uh, we, we, we would hang it to cure and everything. And you had to cut off the part that was on the end where you had to hang it. And uh, she said, so we always cut it off. So her mother had learned to do that because she saw her mother do it. Mm -hmm. And then she did what she saw her mother do. Mm -hmm. And it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. They were throwing away really good meat mm -hmm. every single time she cooked a ham mm -hmm. for, for no reason, but just because it was something that was done mm -hmm. in the past. So mm -hmm. they, you know, I mean, it's, it's just such, such a true picture often right. of what we do. We just keep going in our little yeah. rhythm, not even knowing why we're right. doing it. We it's just true. do it. Yeah. Right. When we allow the Holy Spirit to do an audit of our life, he'll show us those things. Yeah. And um, it, it's beautiful how he, he will, just as you were speaking to the woman a while ago, he'll take our hand in those yeah. things and show us the new way. And the scripture says that his paths are happy paths. Yep. And that doesn't mean that everything's, it doesn't mean it's always just a smooth path, right? right? But he's there with us in yeah. that. Another thing that keeps us is fear. Mm -hmm. and, and all of the what ifs, the you know, experiences of the past that are wanting to come into this day and I just continue to hear the Lord say, it's a new day. Yeah. We've got to live in the newness of the new day. Yeah. And in those places where there is fear, those are places that are opportunity to discover what love looks like mm -hmm. in the face of that fear. When, I, when I'm up against something like that and I'm feeling you know, fear going off in me, scripture says, love abolishes fear. Yeah. So it's a place in me that is being carved out for love to come in in a whole new yeah. way and show me another dimension of who God is in that place. So good. But it's not a reason to stay put. Yeah. And we oftentimes will fear the unknown. And so like even in right. revival, because we're all positioning ourselves. In fact, right now our ministry mm -hmm. is praying for 50 <laughs> days in a row for yeah. revival. Yeah. And it's so exciting um, because we're positioning ourselves mm -hmm. for the new. But the thing is about revival, mm -hmm. when it comes, when a move of God comes, there's nothing to compare it to because it's different right. from any other move. So it's like 
when it finally comes, mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid of it. That's why they don't jump in. In fact, a lot of people in the church, church leaders even, will persecute that next move of God because it's unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of the new. Right. They don't understand it. It's not according to their grid of the mm -hmm. past or the way they've seen God do it. I've done it exactly. myself, you know, yeah, exactly. um, because you had no grid for it, so you become afraid of it. Yeah. And we have to go into the presence of God and say, God, if I'm going to move forward with you, I need understanding. It's not that I would accept everything that's going on, mm -hmm. but I need you to help me rightly divide this, and he will. That's good. Yeah. And there are things that are going to happen in that, that our brains are going to go, what in the world, yeah. and are going to react against. Yeah. But pay attention to what your spirit does. Yeah. Because if your spirit goes, oh, yeah. then you're discerning something right. good. We don't want to judge what God is right. creating. <laughs> right. Oh, I could talk about this for, forever, but we'll, we will end with a decree for women on the rise. Mm -hmm. You will never lose sight of God's steadfast love for you. Your footsteps, your footsteps, your footsteps are steadied by his faithfulness. You will not be pulled to the left or the right or anchored in the past. With holy determination, you will rise and shake off the chains that have held you. You will lay hold of your new day of destiny. Thank you for being with us, Women on the Rise, and we will see you soon.